Hi, I'm Jay Tyler. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Quad Helix appliance, what it does, how it works, and some variations on its design. Here's a Quad Helix appliance I'm going to be making for a doctor. They sent the bands along, and I'll be circumnavigating these six-year molars with a Fisher Burr to put the bands down, but I'm, I like to bend the wire if I'm going to have to seat the bands, but I like to have bend the wire before I do that so that I can see where the tissue is so that I don't end up impinging on the tissue because once I circumnavigate that I could destroy something tissue wise that would uh, that I, I need to make sure that I'm not going to be impinging on it. But anyway, typically a quad helix appliance, this is one of many designs, we're going to look at several of them here. It will go, it will have the four helices, and that's the plural word for helix or helixes. Uh, it will have the four, hence the name quad helix and then it will be soldered to the lingual of the bands. It will extend up typically and engage either all the way up to the middle of, of the mesial of the cuspid, in this case deciduous cuspids, or it can terminate at the mesial of the first bicuspid, or in this case the uh, deciduous first molars. And its primary purpose, or what it's most often used for, is for arch expansion. And there's a few considerations and we'll talk about, uh, let's just break it down and talk about the interior component first. So in the interior, uh, these two helices are parallel with one another and they have a bar that just goes, the bar just goes straight across in the interior. Uh, that's a very common design. Uh, you can also have it where the interior loops are down more into the pallet and uh, then the wire comes more, more up and then has the distal helix and engages along the lingual like the other one did. I've seen it like this before. I've seen some preformed uh, quad helix appliances where the two anterior helices are close together and then they kind of bend it out a little bit and then back. Uh, that's one way I've seen it where they, instead of it going straight across, it's rounded in the anterior. It's a little more comfortable for the tongue that way. In this particular design, the helices are parallel with the occlusal plane. Here's another design where they're uh, kind of contoured with the wall of the palate. So all kinds of designs for this. So when a doctor sends me uh, just a model, and, and doctor I don't know, sends me a model and says, make me a quad helix, I get on the phone and say, okay, let's talk about it. Which, which way do you want it done? Uh, for instance, in the distal, you've got this design where uh, these anterior helices are parallel with the occlusal plane, but when you get here, back here, they're kind of turned a little sideways. This is the way this doctor likes it. And sometimes they're a lot closer to the palate right here than what I show here. But this is the way this doctor likes this done, so I just make it the way they want it done. In the anterior, the, one of the big deals is that you have to have enough room to put a pair of three-pronged pliers in there. Even the most close together one has to be enough for that because that's, tip, that's typically how they do the expansion adjustment. Now, if one of the things that the quad helix does is it allows more wire component in this space. So this, because of the loops, it has more wire body. Now here's a wire that doesn't have the helices, but it's the same form as one of the ones I just showed you. And what I'm going to do here in a few minutes is I'm going to unbend all of this and I'm going to unbend this and we're going to put them side by side and see how much more length this wire has than this wire. And if I put this on top of this one, you can tell that they are bent just about the same length. So this will be fun to kind of unbend these and just compare the length. So I'll do that in a minute. But first let's talk about what it does, how it works. Okay, so I said typically they will put the three-pronged pliers in here and, and bend. And let me turn this so you can see what happens. Okay, watch how it expands when I bend this. Watch the distal. <laughs> Get where I can bend it. Okay. So I'm overdoing it. So you can see. So you can see that this expanded those molars put an expansion force on the molars, but also when it, when it expanded, it caused the molars to rotate this way. See, it bent, but it rotated this way. So the doctor would have to come in here and do a counter bend, and I'm just going to use some elongated bird beak pliers 
and grab this, he would have to do an, a, a counter bend with some kind of a plier. So he would have to bend it back like that. So the first bend caused this component to go this way and then you had to go in here and bend it so that the component went out that way. That would allow expansion without rotation. Now another thing the quad helix does is it will allow rotation. If you wanted to expand this arch and rotate this molar this way, well you wouldn't have to do that counter bend. But now let's say that you wanted to, all you wanted to do is rotate the molar this way. If you did that, then uh, what's nice about this type that's parallel, where all the helices are parallel with the occlusal plane, is that this is kind of like a safety pin. All you're doing is just opening up this safety pin. If you had this type like this, well the safety pin is on this angle. It's not on this angle. So it would still work, but you'd have to be a little fancier wire bender, I guess, to accomplish that. Uh, but this way, all you're doing is just opening, opening up the helix, just like opening up a safety, bin, a safety pin. So if you wanted to rotate this molar, say this molar is rotated this way and you wanted to rotate it that way, and that was your, one of the purposes you had. Well, if you did that, then you would have to bend the wire so that it ends up going like this. Well, it's gonna, the lingual arm is going to bump into the lingual of the posterior teeth. So you would have to bend that wire out of the way, which is going to put it out there where the tongue can play with it and get irritated, so that's no good. So what I've done in those situations is uh, we would just not have the lingual arm extend up. We would cut it off right here and just solder right from the helix onto the lingual of the band. Now at that point, you could just grab it with a pair of pliers and bend it out like that. And then when you seat the appliance, it would have I'm going to put it here and you'll see it would have that closed pin type movement going on. Now, uh, once the molar is rotated, if you wanted to do expansion at that point, we'd have to go back in there and add the lingual arms. Or you could do the expansion and then the rotation later. Uh, there's just all kinds of ways to do that. But now I talked about how if we were to take this wire and undo it and compare it with this wire, uh, what the length would be. So we'll see how much more room, how much more resiliency this has. Now the idea is if you have a, uh, a wire that's like a foot long and you bend it, uh, hold one end and bend the other, it's going to have a lot more resiliency than a wire that's only six inches long. So that's kind of uh, part of the idea of this. Uh, so I mean I can just sit here, I can feel the difference in the, in the resiliency of this one and, and this one. So I'm going to unbend these and then we're going to measure them just for the fun of it and see what we got. So let me just start doing that on this and then I'll do the other one and we'll be back in just a minute. Okay I've unbent both of the wires. This is the wire that didn't have any of the helixes. This is the wire that was the quad helix wire. So I'll straighten them out and we're going to put one end together this end we'll put together and let's look out here and you can see how much longer the quad helix wire was. So it gives it that much more resiliency. So that's uh, part of the way the quad helix works. So that's it for this week. I'm going to take uh, next week off. It's Thanksgiving week and I will see you the week after that. Happy Thanksgiving. <music>